Do you suffer from flaky skin on your face and body and want to know why? Or do you simply know that once the cold sets in, your face will start to peel even though you moisturize? No matter if flaky peeling skin is a regular, seasonal or first time thing for you, after watching today's video, you should know what flaky skin actually is, how you can avoid it and what you should absolutely not do when it happens. And the best way to treat it, obviously, both in the form of general tips as well as skincare products that might help. So without further ado, let's talk. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Dr. Anne, a physician passionate about skincare and well aging. To understand what flaky skin actually is, you need to remember that the part of the skin we are seeing is only the upper part called epidermis, made up of already dead skin cells that are linked together by a lipid layer, mainly made up of ceramides, cholesterol and free fatty acids between them. On top of that, the sebum produced in the sebaceous gland spreads, sealing the top layer of skin off against the environment. So at the base layer, new cells are formed that travel up, lose their nucleus, and once they reach the skin surface, ideally shed in a controlled process called desquamation. If that desquamation process doesn't happen as it should, because your skin is lacking sebum or epidermal lipids, for example, the result might be visible flaking or peeling, often alongside itching. The reasons for that are manifold and range from genetics to external factors, some of which can be easily treated, while others need medical guidance. To the ones you usually can't treat alone at home belong skin conditions like psoriasis, atopic eczema, seborrheic dermatitis, or rosacea, as well as skin manifestations of general diseases like diabetes or hypothyroidism. Sometimes flaky skin also occurs as a side effect of certain drugs used to treat high blood pressure, seizures, or a side effect of acne medication, and obviously that as well needs talking to your doctor. It is not a good idea to alter your seizure tablets based on the fact you heard on YouTube that this might improve your skin flaking. Another reason for flaky skin is as part of a generalized infection or a skin infection with fungi, staphylococcus, or streptococci. This often presents with strong itching and yellow secretion out of the affected areas. More common than the ones above are lifestyle factors that range from the weather, with cold and dry air, as well as wind reducing your skin's natural lipids, to the products you are using and the frequency you use them with. Certain products can be stripping, and I say products, not ingredients, on purpose. The overall formulation is much more important than the individual ingredient, no matter how harsh it might be when used on its own. Often cleansers are the culprit, especially those designed for oily skin, as they aim to remove excess sebum and other skin lipids, which in turn can lead to a lack of these lipids if your skin isn't as oily as you assumed, or if your skin lipids levels are reduced by hormonal changes, the weather or the aging process. Yes, age. Once again, a contributing factor to skin changes, this time it being more prone to flaking due to reduced lipid levels through reduced production. A special form of product-induced flaky skin is perioral dermatitis, where the skin around your mouth, perioral, and often nose is irritated and red, and that was, back when I was in university, called flight attendance disease, as legend had it that female flight attendants often use a variety of different cosmetic products, much more than the average consumer. That was obviously before the days of the YouTube influencers with their 10-step routines. I think perioral dermatitis deserves a video on its own, so let's move on. The last causes I want to mention are physical damage done through the skin through UVA radiation, heat or chafing. All these lead to flaky skin during the healing process and nutritional deficiencies like vitamin D or a niacin deficiency. A common misconception is that because the skin reacts to a problem with flaking, that means that the flaking is a sign of the skin healing. It is not. The healing process takes part in the deeper layers of the skin, not right at the surface, and is not quicker or better because there are flakes on top. Still, you should absolutely not rip the flakes off if they are big enough to grab. They do provide protection to the new skin forming underneath, and ripping them off could create a wound that increases the risk for infection. Now, when you look at the causes we mentioned earlier, you will realize that flaky skin can't always be avoided. You can't change your genetic disposition, for example. What you can do, though, is avoid things that aggravate the situation, and that is everything that will weaken your skin barrier or lipid layer. Use gentle cleansing products that respect the skin's pH, don't wash too frequently, don't overdo it on the actives, and add lipids back in your skin with your moisturizer. When you react to dry air, try using a humidifier and protect your skin with a scarf or similar when you go outdoors in the cold. 
Don't smoke, don't get too much UV light and avoid water that is really hot. It isn't rocket science, but often needs some effort to overcome old habits. If your skin is already flaky, there are a few skincare things you can do in addition to the preventatives one mentioned above to try and treat that. And the most important is your moisturizer. If it isn't part of an infection, it usually means your skin is lacking lipids and these can be applied topically. Put very simple, the thicker the cream, the better the results. But as we are well versed in skincare, let's look at the different components of your average moisturizer. There are humectants meant to draw water in the skin, which are good at hydrating, but probably won't have much of an effect on flaky skin without occlusives. Well-known humectants are hyaluronic acid, glycerin, urea, or the so-called natural moisturizing factors, NMF. Then there are emollients, which aim to fill the space between the skin cells, so basically go where the lipids are missing, and occlusives that form a film on top of the skin rather than going between the cells. Both are amazing in improving the appearance of flaky skin, and depending on the actual ingredient, often have emollient and occlusive properties, so this isn't a strict either-or. Usually things like petrolatum or beeswax are considered occlusives, while other lipids like linoleic acid or ceramides are considered emollients. Depending on the reason for your flaky skin, you usually need a mixture of both, but weight differently. If your skin is flaky because you are outside in the snow a lot, more occlusives might work better for you. If you overdid the actives, more emollients might help speed up recovery. As I mentioned in my video on ceramides though, we do have, outside of very specific skin conditions, no evidence that a certain kind or a certain ratio of skin lipids are better than others. Most moisturizers do feature humectants, emollients and occlusives in the mix anyway, so they should work fine. Now, sometimes you do use a moisturizer religiously, but your skin still is flaky. In that case, I will take the following steps to improve the situation. Look at the rest of your routine. Moisturizer alone will probably not be enough to counteract frequent washing with a stripping cleanser or using high amounts of actives. Look at your moisturizer. Names are deceiving and sometimes the product called serum is richer than the one called face cream. In doubt, opt for something that feels richer or mix a few drips of oil with your product before application. If all that won't help, consider the other courses I mentioned before and, if in doubt, consult a doctor to rule out an underlying skin condition or a systemic disease. As always, I want to shortly address the food and supplement question alongside the usual disclaimer that I am not a nutritionist. While malnutrition can be the cause for flaky skin, it is rare in otherwise healthy individuals eating a balanced diet. If you suffer from malabsorption due to a gastric condition or suffer from alcoholism or other substance abuse, I would suggest talking to your healthcare provider, but otherwise, I don't think you need a supplement or a specific diet. So, when is flaky skin a reason to see a doctor? Well, if it really bothers you and you feel that despite taking preventative measures and using a rich moisturizer things don't improve, you should go get professional opinion to rule out underlying issues that need treatment. Warning signs also include itching or pain associated with the flaky skin, large areas of face and body are affected, foul odor or a yellowish liquid oozing out of the areas, cracking and bleeding, and signs of general infection like nausea, dizziness or confusion. If you experience any of these symptoms, talking to your healthcare provider is recommended. Do you suffer from flaky skin on your face? please tell me your tips in the comments below. I will link to more videos that you might find interesting on the screen and add links to my Instagram, blog and Patreon account in the description box. See you soon. Bye!